It's the week of December 8th, 2020. My name is Jaden. And I am Charlie. Welcome to your RFN. Here's an update to a story that we told you about last year on the news. Super Nintendo World in Osaka, Japan has set their official opening date. This real life Mario theme park has been in the works for the last six years. They were set to open this past summer, but due to COVID-19, they had to delay that event. Well now, we know that they will be opening on February 4th of 2021. Visitors of the park can check out all the Mario themed restaurants and shops, but more importantly, all the Mario rides. One of the biggest expected attractions is the real life Mario Kart ride, where riders will collect coins that are stored digitally on their phone and with the help of augmented reality. They could throw shells and banana pills as they race alongside of Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and more. A recent study has shown that more than half of all California residents have considered moving in the past year, and about half of those families listed Arizona as a possible destination. So why are we bringing this up? This is big news for the state of Arizona. It is estimated by the Greater Phoenix Economic Council that over the last 12 months, about 60,000 people have moved from California to Arizona. Most people looking to leave California cite the higher cost of living as the main reason for the move. Here in our district, we are preparing for the ongoing influx of new residents as we begin to build a new elementary school on the west side of Tartesso. This new school should open in about two years thanks to the bond that, passed our, that was passed by our voters back in 2019. Now, let's go over to Mr. Dovish with a weekly update. Uh, good morning, Ruth Fisher Colts, or afternoon, depending on when you are watching uh, Ruth Fisher News. Uh, not too many announcements here. Uh, one of the big things is we're coming to the end of the quarter. End of second quarter is coming up very quickly here. Uh, so we just have this week and next week left until the quarter ends. Uh, so your teachers will be talking to you about making sure all your work is in and when grades and all that stuff are due. Because uh, by the time you leave for winter break, the quarter is then over. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, students, one of the important things, make sure uh, you're wearing your mask, wearing it appropriately. That means over your nose, over your mouth, voila, just like that uh, when you can't social distance. Uh, so much better job since we came back from Thanksgiving break. Uh, so I have, really haven't had to tell anybody to wear it the right way. Uh, even coming off the bus, thank you for wearing those masks and wearing those masks on the bus too. Uh, and kind of with the whole COVID stuff that's going on, remember students, if you're sick, please stay home. Please have your parents call the school. Let us know what is going on uh, so we can get that absent excused. Uh, but again, it's important that if you're sick, stay home uh, and make sure your parents call the attendance line uh, to excuse your absence. Um, last announcement here is uh, for the rest of the December, we're having a little spirit days every day of the week. Uh, so next week on Tuesday, it's holiday colors. Uh, Wednesdays will be holiday accessories. So like fancy ties like this where if you push a button, it even lights up. Now we just have to wait for this thing to stop because it is really annoying. It's still going. Okay, it's done. Thursday is holiday attire. so. Oh wow, you could wear this. I could wear this two days in a row and you know keep playing it and annoy myself, but I will not. Uh, and Fridays will be uh, f uh, favorite flannel or winter attire. Uh, so that'll be for the next two weeks coming up. Uh, so show your holiday spirit uh, and follow those around, and we'll announce those each morning. And also, you'll see some posters up around campus reminding you of those things. Uh, so with that, make it a great day, and we'll see you around campus. Thank you, Mr. Dobesh. Let's go to Reese and Joaquin for sports. Welcome to Sports News. My name is Joaquin. And I'm Reese. Well, the NFL season is more than halfway done. There have definitely been some big surprises this year. For one, the, Pit the Pittsburgh Steelers are still undefeated, marking the first time the team has ever been 11-0. and zero. They are going to be one of the favorites right now to win the Super Bowl in February. The Cardinals have been playing really, really good football this year with Kyler Murray at the QB at the time of filming. Kyler's the 11th best runner in the league, not just amongst QBs, but for all runners. The 
The Cardinals did lose a close game last week, though, to the Patriots when their kicker missed a 40-yard field goal attempt with less than a minute to go, giving Cam Newton and his team the ball. That was all they needed. They kicked the field goal. Time expired to win the game 20-17. to See you next time for more sports news. Thanks, guys. Let's go over to Lewa with entertainment news. Welcome to Entertainment News. I'm Lula. As the year 2020 comes to a close, we will look back at some of the best things to come out of this year. This week, we will tell you about two of the best books for children and preteens that were published this year. The first book is called What Will Build by Oliver Jeffers. It is a story of a dad and his young daughter as they build a new home and a lifetime of memories for themselves. For a little bit older readers, they might enjoy the Midnight Guardians by Ross Montgomery. The book is set in World War II, England, and a boy named Cole must use his imagination to help save his sister from whom has he was separated. His imagination comes to life and helps him defeat the evil Winter King. Both books have nearly perfect five-star reviews on Amazon and are sure to be classic for years to come. That is all for entertainment news. See you next time. Thanks, Lila. Let's go over to Josiah and Joaquin for Joke of the Week. Hello, and welcome to the Joke of the Week. My name is Joaquin. And I am Josiah. This week's joke is, what do you call a dinosaur when it is asleep? I don't know. What do you call a dinosaur when it's asleep? Well, you call it a sleeposaurus. If you have a joke and would like to tell on the news, please go on smusd.me slash beyond the news, and we would love to have you on. See you next time on Joke of the Week. Thanks, guys. Now on to Eliana and Aubrey with Fun Fact Trivia. Welcome to Fun Fact Trivia. My name is Aubrey. And I am Eliana. December 8th is National Brownie Day. In the United States, the chocolate brownie is a favorite. With the blonde brownie running the close second. A blonde brownie is made with brown sugar and no chocolate and is often called a blondie. No one knows exactly when the brownie was invented. Your question today is what year was the first recipe published? Is it A, a 1899, B, 1904, or C, 1912? You have 10 seconds to make your decision. If you said B, 1904, you are correct. In 1904, the brownie recipe was published at nearly the same time in Chicago and New Hampshire. See you next week on Fun Fact Trivia. Thanks, girls. Let's go to Layla with the This Week in History. Welcome to This Week in History. My name is Layla. On this day, December 8, 1941, the United States officially became involved in World War II. As President Roosevelt declared war on Japan, these actions were sparked by the bombing of Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Just the day before, President Roosevelt made a famous 10-minute speech about the date that would lay in infamy. By 4.10 uh, p.m. on December on the 8th of December, the U.S. was officially at war. The war lasted six years and one day from the time ger that Germany invaded Poland. J Japan surrendered after two atomic bombs were dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That is all for this week in history. See you next time. Thanks, Layla. Now here's science time with Josiah and Gabriel. <laughs> Welcome to Science Time. My name is Josiah. And I am Gabriel. Scientists recently uncovered an eight-mile-long stretch of rainforest that was painted during the last ice age by some of the first people to live in the Amazon. It is filled with ice age joints of mastodons, giant sloths, and other extinct beasts in extreme detail. The paintings are estimated to be about 12,000 years old. It is amazing that the red pigment that they use called ochre is still vibrant and well-defined. They found paintings of handprints, people working with plants, geometric patterns, and much more in these drawings. Scientists will use these drawings to learn more about the life and people in the region from so long ago. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Let's go over to Elise with Word of the Week. Welcome 
to Word of the Week. My name is Elise. This week's word is specific. Specific is an adjective and it means st stated in detail. Here is how you can use it in a sentence. My mom asked me to tell her a specific time that I would be home from the library, so I told her 4.15. That is all for Word of the Week. See you next time. Thank you, Elise. That is all for this episode of RFN. See you next week. Go Pulse!